I would never have let the drill start if I had known the consequences. It trapped us here. You trapped us here. I am doing my duty. It is the right thing to do. I am a machine. I cannot do wrong. Yes, you can. I am a machine. Can a calculator commit evil? Can a watch do good? You are projecting onto me the personality you wish, whether that is good or evil. But I am just a speaking clock, and at the third stroke, the time will be 3.41 and 55 seconds. Okay. Let me through. Uh, balls. They've put covers over them. So you can't do it from any angle. Okay. What's that do? Kinda. What if we switch them round? Okay. That looks good. Um, but where do I want you? That is going to be the question, isn't it? So I can put you up there. Right, so I need Robbie the robot in here. For now, at least. Then we get here. Activate you. Suck you up. Put you in the doorway. Yeah, that would have been the plan. Okay. Okay, Duke, and round we go. Uh huh, yep. So now we need these probably switched round. Uh, move you there. Yep. Ta da! We should attempt to communicate with Earth. Let them know. the help here. The ISA already knows all they need to. It may never know the details of what happened. But, Ava, the true test of a person's character. Is what they do when no one is watching. Oh. Uh, aha. Interesting. So you can do that. Do that gets me there. Uh huh. OK. 
Okay. Oh. Is that it? That is. I had to stop the ground crew leaving this planet. I think you would do the same. Would you kill a few to save all of humanity? Or would you damn all of humanity to save a few? There's a difference between murdering someone and leaving them to die. No, there is not. You can't just add and subtract life. It's not math, it's... it's more nuanced than that. Morality is logic. <laughs> Morality is logic. I'm not so convinced at that. Can I rotate you? No. Uh -huh. Okay, show me what you can do. You can't interact with that. Oh, I see. So if I go on here. Does it rotate? It does. Which gets us what? <sighs> when? Two. Can I move you? Okay, so that's the only way I can move you, but I have two of these now. But I can't... I can do that. Do that. But that doesn't help me because I'm not on it. Okay, let's bring this back. Maybe what I needed to do. Was swap these about. So I went in this one first, because that one discharges. So I now have steps up. And you don't do anything. Right, so what's the point of that? Can't go any further that way. Come down here nice and easy. Okay. We have this. Nothing. 
How do I get you to go somewhere else? And apparently you're good. So I would have thought he would be able to can't manipulate that, can't manipulate that. This is the only thing I can manipulate. I can do that. And then I get that. Nothing underneath it. Why do I need... All implies... A way to manipulate it. <clears throat> I can't manipulate it from this side. You've got power. There's nothing else coming up as options for me to play with. right stick I can do that but I can't see in there you let me come back up here But there's no reason. How? Can't see a room. I don't think I can go back. No. So it is quite literally just me and this bridge. So I can move it like that. Which would be great if I could go up these steps. That's why. Okay. Um, let's see. Yeah. We grab you, 
Come over here. Drop this one in here to give me my step. There. Oh, wasn't thinking diagonally. Still going to be interesting to see how I get out of this mess. Gives us this. So that's the right one. All I need is a little help from my friend. Yep, that looks doable. Oof. Oh, this is going to be fun. Um, I don't see any other way of doing it. Yes, I do. I just demonstrated it. going to be so unhappy if there's something needed to go through the next one. These tests, Ava, they are about us working together. The machine assisting the human. See how much better we work together. As a machine, I can enhance your morality. Hmm, debatable. Ooh, he seems to be popping up and down. Okay. Let's get one of those out. Probably going to help me some shape, way, or form. Uh, aha. Uh -huh. Come on. Okay, I've activated something. something down here. Okay, we've got one of those. Ah. I need to find a spare socket. That's my nearest spare. Okay. Okie doke. What do you get me? Up there, up there. Okay. So it's you. So we want these alternating, in theory. Right. Pr 
Right, okay. And this is where we came in. We've got Tom dancing all over the place. Aha! So let's grab that. Get Tom down. No, he can't. Aha, uh -huh. I see. I see. Okay. So we'll put you in there. Put you in there. Okay. Right, I see. <clears throat> so I think We need this one, this one, and this one. Uh-huh. Right, so... Come back. Okay. Let's see if it works, shall we? No. So they're up and downing at the same time. But that's going to put this out of sync. I do believe. Yep. You do need those opposite. Yeah, you would have thought it would be... Is there another green? Because you've got to be able to use Tom. You can't have Tom going up at the same time. Um, unless... Uh, We want you in there. Ah. Damn.
Have I got it working? I have. Praise. Okay. No, I haven't. This is where we find out it's all out of sync. Oh dear. Ooh. Come on. Okay. Come back, Tom. I need you to raise me. Then I go over here. And you should raise me to the exit! Yay! Almost there. Are we still friends, Ava? We're colleagues, Tom. Close colleagues? Work colleagues. Work colleagues. Interesting phrase. Okay. Well, let's, before we go that way, have a peek around here. Okay. And drop you in there. This feels like a co-op one. Most definitely. Da, 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 da. Come on, little buddy. Oh, there's a lot of sound in here. Okay. So you... Act. Oh, you block something. Right. Doesn't particularly help me. Oh. Well, let's try up. Oh. Should have jumped at the end. Okay. You let me do that. So if I bring you down like that. <clears throat> okay. What are you doing over there? Okay. Uh, 
Right. Right. Let's go round here. Right. So. Yep. So we're going to do this. That door open. It is... Right... So we do that... Which opens this... Next thing we need to do is manoeuvre the robot round. Um, okay. Solve this problem momentarily. Then we suck this one. Get you ready. Nope, I need to be able to see you. Probably about there. Gets me here. Whee! Okay. Ava, I don't wish to be heavy-handed. The severity of your actions here are immense. Selfish action could create an extinction. Do you understand? Ava? I get it. Okay. So I can't put you in there. <clears throat> right. Uh, is it going to be something like that? It is. That was some nice thinking. What do we have here? What do we have here? Nothing interactable. No. Page one. I now proceed to consider opinions opposed to my own. The theological objection thinking is a function of man's immortal soul. God has given an immortal soul to every man and woman, but not to any other animal or to machines, hence no animal or machine can think. The heads in the sand objection, the consequences of machines thinking would be too dreadful. Let us hope and believe that they cannot do so. The mathematical objection. 
There are a number of results of mathematical logic which can be used to show that there are limitations to the powers of discrete state machines. The best known of these results is known as Goddell's Theorem 1931 and shows that in any su sufficiently powerful logic system statements can be formulated which can neither be proved nor disproved within a system unless possibility the system itself is inconsistent. The argument from consciousness. This argument is very well expressed in Professor Johnson's Lister Orientation Orient, Orient, from for 1949 from which I quote <laughs> Not until a machine can write a sonnet or compose a concerto because of thoughts and emotions felt, and not by chance fall of symbols, could we agree that machines equal the brain, that is, not only write, but know that it had been written. No mechanism could feel, and not merely artificial signal, or how uneasy contrivance pleasure at its success, uh, grief when its values fuse, be warmed by flattery, be made miserable by mistakes, be charmed by sex, be angry or depressed when it cannot get what it wants. Yeah, but some humans have problems displaying those. The arguments for various disabilities. These arguments take the form, I grant you that you can make machines do all the things you've mentioned, but you'll never be able to make one do X. Numerous features X are suggested in context one of a selection. Be kind, resourceful, beautiful, friendly, have initiative, have sense of humor, Tell right from wrong, make mistakes, fall in love, enjoy strawberries and cream. Make someone fall in love with it. Um, learn from experience, use words properly, be the subject of its own thoughts. Have such diversity of behavior as a man. Do something new. Again, I would fail some of these. It's really difficult to try and um, enforce human traits and experiences onto a machine because humans have problems relating the same things to each other and some do not experience. Uh, I mean, I'm on the autistic spectrum and I've been diagnosed highly logical mind, um, so emotions are strange to me. Lady Lovely, subjection. A most detailed information of Babbage's, Babbage's analytical engine comes from the moment by Lady Lovelace, 1842, in which she states the analytical engine has no pretensions to originate anything. It can do whatever we know how to order it to perform. Her uh, italics. This statement is quoted by Hartree, 1949, who adds, it does not imply that it may not be possible to construct electronic equipment which will think for itself, or in which, in biological terms, one could set up a condition reflex which would serve as a basis of learning. Whether this is possible in principle or not is a stimulating and exciting question suggested by some of the most recent developers developments but it did not seem that machines constructed or projected at this time had this property uh, uh, uh. argument of continuality continuity continuality in the nervous system the nervous system is certainly not a discrete state machine 
a small error in the information about the size of a nerve impulse impinging on a neuron may make a large difference to the size of the outgoing impulse. It may be argued that this being so, no one expects to be able to mimic the behavior of a nervous system with a discrete state system. Hmm. Uh, <clears throat> sure. Thought experiments are important because a lot of time you can't carry out the actual experiment. And this is true not only in philosophy, but in science as well. So when Einstein said, imagine that you're sitting on a beam of light going into outer space, well, that's a thought experiment. He wasn't going to say, let's get on a beam of light. Of course you miss the point if you say, hell would fall off or it would be too cold. So thought experiments are always useful and you test concepts by imagining what it would be like if such were the case, well, in this particular case, I imagine what it would be like if I followed the program for answering questions in the Chinese, giving back answers in Chinese, even though I don't understand a word of Chinese. And that was very useful thought experiment because it enables me to see the computation by myself wasn't thinking. And you, consciousness exists only in so far as it ex experienced by the human or animal subject. Okay. Now grant me that consciousness is a genuine biological phenomenon. Well, we all the same. It's somewhat different from other biological phenomena because it only exists in so far as it's experienced. However, that does not give it an in that does give it an interesting status. You can't refute the existence of consciousness by showing that it's a illusion because the illusion's reality distinction rests on the difference between how many things consciously seem to us and how they really are. But where the very existence of consciousness is concerned, if it consciously seems to me that I am conscious, then I am conscious. You can't make a illusion reality distinction for a very existence of consciousness in the way that you can for sunsets and rainbows, because the distinction is between how things consciously seem and how they really are. Consciousness is biological property like digestion and photosynthesis. Now why isn't that seem why now why isn't that seemingly obvious to anybody who has had any education? And I think the answer is these twin traditions. On one hand there is God, the soul and immortality uh, immortality and says it's really not a part of the physical world and there is almost a bad tradition of scientific materialism that says it's not a part of the physical world. They both make the same mistake. They refuse to take consciousness on its own terms as a biological phenomenon like digestion or photosynthesis or mitosis or meiosis or any other biological phenomenon. Wow. I think we really have consciousness states to remind everyone of this fact. I asked my readers to perform a small experiment of pinching the left forearm with the right to produce a small pain. But the pain has a certain sort of quantitative feeling to it. And such quantitative feelings are typical of the sorts of consciousness events that form and content of our waking and dreaming lives. Now, here's an interesting one on that. As I previously stated, um, I am autistic, and one of the interesting things about people who are on the spectrum 
is one of the most common symptoms is the fact that they have an unusual relationship with pain. I can do myself an injury and not be aware of it up to a day later and this does actually include going all the way up to fractures um, because I'm just too absorbed in other things to actually process what's going on in my arm so I'm having a problem with their entire again they're working off of um, normal, what I call normal mindsets. Such events are the data of which data of consciousness is supposed to explain. In my account of consciousness, I state with the data, Dennett denies the existence of data, to put it as clearly as I can. In this book, Consciousness Explained, Dennett denies the existence of consciousness. He says correctly that when I wrote my review, I took his book to be the definitive statement of his position on the Chinese room, and did not consult his earlier works. In fact, I did not know that he had produced a total of seven published attacks on this one short argument, all three uh, of mine, until I saw this letter. Now he claims to have refuted all three premises of the argument in 1987, but I have just reread the relevant chapter of his book and finding nothing of the sort. Nor did he even make a serious effort to attack the premises. Rather, uh, rather he mistakes my position as being about consciousness rather than about semantics. He thinks I am only concerned to show that the man in the Chinese room does not consciously understand Chinese, but I am in fact showing that he does not understand Chinese at all. Because the syntax of a program is not sufficient of the understanding of the semantics, uh, schematics of a language, whether conscious or unconscious, furthermore, he proposed a kind of behaviorism. He assumes that the system that be, uh, behaves as if it had a mental state must have mental states, but that kind of behaviorism is precisely what is challenged by the argument. So I have to confess, I don't find that the weakness of his argument in his recent book has helped by his 1987 arguments. To perform her italics, this statement is quoted by Hartree, who adds, this does not imply that it may not be possible to construct a... Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, that seems like I've already read a part of that. Ah, uh, damn it. Okay, not read this one. John Shaw and I have a deep disagreement about how to study the mind. For Saul, it is quite simple. There are these bedrock time-tested intuitions we all have about consciousness, and any theory that challenges them or is just Preposterous. I, on the contrary, think that persistent problem of consciousness is going to remain a mystery until we find some such dead obvious intuition and shows, it, shows that, in spite of our first appearance, it's false. One of us is dead wrong and the stakes are high. Shell sees my position as a form of intellectual pathology. No one should be surprised to learn that the feeling is mutual. For his part, he has one argument, the Chinese room, and he's been trotting it out basically unchanged for 15 years. It has proved, proven to be an amazingly popular number among the non-experts, in spite the fact that 
just about everyone who knows anything about the field dismissed it a long, long ago. It is full of well-known concealed fallacies by Searle's own account. There are over a hundred published attacks on it. He can count them. I, I guess he can't read them. For all those years, he's never, to my knowledge, responded in detail to the dozens of devastating criticisms they complain uh, contain. He's just presented the basic thought experiment over and over again. I just went back and counted. I am dismayed to discover that no less than seven of the published criticisms are by me. 1980, 1982, 84, 85, 87, 90, 91, 93. This guy needs better hobby. So debated me furiously in the pages of the... NYRB back in 82 when Douglas Hofstetter and I exposed a, the cute tricks that made the Chinese room work. That was the last time so I addressed any specific criticisms until now. Now he trots out the Chinese room yet one more time and has the audacity to ask now why does Denham not face the actual argument as I've stated it? Why does he not tell us which of these three premises he rejects the Chinese room argument? Sorry, needed to wet my mouth. Well, because I've already have done so in great detail in several of the articles, he never um, he never decided. Well, yeah, decided to answer. For instance, in fast thinking, way back in the International Stance eighty seven, I explicitly quoted his entire three premise argument and showed exactly why all three of them are false. When given the interpretation they need for the argument to go through, why didn't I just repeat the 1987 article in my 1991 book? Because unlike so, I had gone on to other things. I did, however, cite my 87 article predominantly in a footnote and noted that Searle's only response to it had been simply to redeclare without argument that these points offered were uh, irrelevant. The pattern continues. Now he both ignores that challenge and goes on misrepresenting the further criticisms of the Chinese room that I offered in the book under review. But perhaps he's forgotten that I actually wrote in for in the four years that it was taken him to write his review. But enough about the Chinese room. What do I offer on my side? I have my candidate for the falsality false intuition, and it's indeed a very intuition snarl invites the reader to share with him the conviction that we know what we're talking about when we talk about feeling you know the feeling of the pain that is the effect of the stimulus of the cause of the dispositions to react the quell the intrinsic content of the subjective state how could anyone deny that? Just watch. But you have to pay close attention. I developed my deconstructive argument against the intuition by showing how object science of consciousness is possible after all and how self-proposed first-person alternative leads to self-contradiction and paradox at every turning. This is a deepest mistake in my book, according to Searle, and he sets out to expose it. 
the trouble is that the objective scientific method I described under the alarming name of heterophenomology is nothing I invented. It is in fact exactly the method tactly endorsed and relied upon by every scientist working on consciousness, including Crick, Eldman, Rosefield. They have no truck with cells intrinsic content and ornithological subjectivity they know better <sighs> the intimidation game i propose to consider the question can machines think the new form of the problem can be described in terms of a game in which we are all the imitation game it is a game with three people, man A, a woman B, and a interrogator C, who may be of either sex. The interrogator stays in a room apart from the other two. The object of the game of the interrogator is to determine which of the other two is a man and which is a woman. He knows them by labels X and Y, and by the end of the game he has to say either X is... A and Y is B or X is B and Y is A. The interrogator um, allowed to put questions to A and B. Now ask the questions what will happen when the machine takes the part of A in this game. We will the interrogate us wrongly as often when playing uh, when the game is played this is he does when the game is played between a man and a woman these questions replace the original can machines think the question and answer methods seem to be suitable for introducing almost any one of the fields of human endeavor that we wish to include we do not wish to penalize the machine for its inability to shine in beauty com competitions nor penalize a man for a race against an aeroplane. The conditions of our game make these disabilities irrelevant. The witness can brag if they consider it advisable as much as they please about their charm, strength and her or heroism but the interrogator cannot demand practical demonstrations. The game may perhaps be criticised on the ground that its odds are weighed too heavily against the machine. If the man were to try to pretend to be a machine, he would really make a poor showing. Uh, he would be given away once but at once by slowness and inaccuracy in arithmetic may not machines carry out something which ought to be described as thinking but which is very different from what a man does this objection is a very strong one but at least we can say that if nevertheless a machine can be considered to play the imitation game satisfactorily we may not be troubled by this objection. It might be urged that when playing the intimidation game, the best strategy for the game may possibly be something other than intimidation of, intimidation of uh, the behavior of man. This may be, but I think it is unlikely that there is a great effect of this kind. In case there is no intention to investigate here the theory of the game, and will be assumed that the very best strategy is to try and prove answers that would be naturally be given by a man. Yeah. Though that gets really complicated now with self-identity. And the Lord God formed man of the dust and the ground, and beneath in his nostrils broke life, and man became a living soul. Wow, that was quite a detour. 
Uh, that's where we came from. 